Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to do another update on the E36 M50 TU turbo build today. I have a bunch of parts to go over that I've been ordering. Not too much left to order, which I'll probably continue to say throughout the entirety of the build, but it is what it is. So after going over some of the parts, stuff like that, we'll probably start picking away at some of the stuff on the block. I did remove the head. I sent the head out to get decked, did some cleaning. Yeah, let's get started. So in typical fashion, I kind of went a little bit overboard. It's, eh, what are you gonna do? So I'll try and make this fairly quick. Um, that way we can get to actual work. Um, but I am excited to go through all this stuff. I opened it for shipping. Haven't really had a chance to really look at a lot of it. So this will be fun. So this, I'm not even sure what this is right now. Hang on. Oh, this is from uh, Garagistic. Pretty sure that's how you say it. So this is DSSR for a ZF, which I was able to secure finally. There is shifter and assembly bits in here. Let's try and keep it kind of organized. Um, this is one of the little brass guys for um, your clutch, the little throw out bit that I can't remember the name of. Heard that's a really good thing to upgrade, so I grabbed one of those rest of the chassis mount shifter right there and then a bunch of bushings I'm pretty sure I got every bushing you could get I did not get the race version those are super stiff which is probably not a bad thing this is the next one down I wanted them fairly soft I do plan to street drive the car a pretty fair amount so I did not want to regret it every single time I tried to go for a drive super excited to have a chassis mount shifter so in the convertible it's a kit from FCP which is it's like a short throw shifter and like a linkage um, cleanup kit basically which does okay it's fine with a get drag I do find that like I still miss gears so chassis mount I'm excited to just have like the clunk of going into gear can't really miss it feels more secure way more simple super into that so that's that this one Oh, this is from FCP. This is, so, I'm a dummy. When I sent the head out to get cleaned and decked, or washed and decked, I didn't remove, there's a couple temperature uh, sensors on there for your coolant. I did not remove those, so I had to order those anyway. And while I was at it, I just ordered a buttload of other sensors. It's not gonna be that exciting to go through, I'm gonna be honest with you, so I'm, I'm not really gonna go through it too heavily here. But basically, I got every sensor I could think of. So I got the two knock sensors for the side of the engine, both coolant sensors again, intake, air temperature. I'll add a list of everything that I got, but it should cover the vast majority of it. The only other sensor that I'm gonna be missing that I still need to order, which I, I guess counts as a sensor is a wideband. I'm gonna have to get a wideband sensor still. This stuff, actually, I didn't order as a kit, so CES Motorsport makes the copper gasket for like spacing the head out so that you're not running stock compression for turbo. This I actually picked up secondhand from my buddy Jordan, who I will tag or something here in the video. Super cool dude, one of my favorite people to drive with. Our cars make the same power and he shreds, so it's super fun. But he had this thing sitting around from a turbo build that he did that never ended up really going anywhere. He was just chasing issues with it constantly. So this was sitting and these are not available through CES right now, so that was a lifesaver. ARP studs to go with it, obviously need to have those. And then this is the CES cut ring gasket. So this thing has got, kind of hard to see, but it's got these little metal rings in here. So the idea is you put these in between the head and the block, obviously, and when you torque it down, these cut into the aluminum head and create a better seal. I've heard nothing but good things about them, so seemed like the move. This one was a little unnecessary, but I thought it would be a cool piece to have, and it wasn't crazy money, so I went and splurged a little bit. And this is from Radium. This is, they basically make a whole kit. You kind of have to piece it together yourself, but should all mount right up. So it's a radium fuel rail. I know the stock ones are good for the power I want, which isn't that much, but that's such a clean looking piece. Like how could you not want to have that? It looks so good. Radium fuel rail, stoked on that. Gonna put that back for now. But then to go with it, also got, they have a fuel pressure regulator, which again, I know the stock one is 
fine, but it's been sitting for years. I don't, I don't know anything else about the car, so might as well refresh it, make sure it's new, make sure it runs mint. So comes with a, or it doesn't come with, you have to order it separately, but there's a fuel pressure, fuel pressure regulator, and this is a little gauge for it. It's, yeah, it's just a little analog guy. But it looks super clean. Um, all their stuff is super highly rated. Everyone has nothing but good to say about them. So, like I said, might as well refresh all the old stuff that's been sitting. Give this thing the best chance it's got. And for like the money, you can't really beat it. I think between like the rail, the regulator, and everything, it's it's less than 500 bucks easily, like by a long shot. So, in my opinion, it's kind of a no-brainer. Like you're gonna be spending that kind of money on the OEM stuff anyway. So don't really mind getting something that's proven and if I wanted to like it all handles E85 race gas all that anyway so super decent piece for the price this thing I'm amped about this is a tile 44 millimeter I think MVR is the code for it wastegate had to go and do it I had to get the obnoxious purple one for sure this thing is gonna be super sick I'm so excited for this thing to be screaming but what's sweet about this is the kit, please don't fall, kit comes with, I'm not going to take them out, but it comes with all the springs. So if I wanted to run just wastegate pressure, like if I was targeting 10 PSI, there's a combination of springs you can throw in it that'll match that. I do plan on running a boost controller. I don't know if it's necessary, but eh, we'll see. But I'm super stoked on this thing. So I had planned on going OEM for these specifically, but Turner offers a kit for ignition coils so stock ones were a little more expensive and these ones are supposedly better than stock but they do look pretty hot so figured it was worth the gamble and again this kit is super reasonable for six coils and the spark plug i think this kit only runs it's like 200 something dollars so to be able to replace all of them i didn't have them anyway but to have brand new fresh ones again it's just a peace of mind thing and they look good like check that thing out Feel free to weigh in too. So it came with these spark plugs. I don't recall what they are exactly. So it comes with FR7 LDC spark plugs. I've always run, I believe it's it's like BKR7E or something like that. I'd have to look, but feel free to weigh in on what you think a decent spark plug would be. They look fine, but... All right, this one got shipped in two boxes. One of them's heavy, one of them's already up here. So I'm gonna leave the other box down there, but... And I'm gonna try and leave most of this wrapped up until I'm actually installing it just to keep it clean and decent. But this is a Pulsar, which is, it seems like a, like a Garrett clone type of thing. But this is a Pulsar 3076. Um, this is the cold side and it has um, everything already mated to that. And the hot side is in this box. But this thing looks super decent. I opted in, I said it in the first video, but I opted in for the T51 mod on it just to make it obnoxious. But the thing looks sweet. I'm super stoked to have it on there. I believe I got the 0.63 AR rather than, I think they offer like a 0.82 or 0.83 just because I want fast spool and I want like zero latency. Like I don't wanna have to wait for it in between throttle stabs or anything like that. I think that'll work pretty well. Worst case scenario, these things are pretty affordable. I could end up getting another bigger one if I need to. Don't think I'll need to. So for cleaning the surface on here, I actually talked to the guy at the machine shop who did the head. Um, got some advice from him. So for the more coarse bits, like whatever the head gasket left over, he suggested taking a razor, basically keeping it flat and running it back and forth. I'm gonna stuff the cylinders before I do any of that, obviously. But he suggested doing that to get most of the coarse stuff off and then he gave me actually thankfully rather than using sandpaper because sandpaper if you're using your hands your fingers will make an indent and it kind of puts too much pressure on it's like kind of a spongy material but it has some grit think of it like a magic eraser i'm sure there's a term for it but i can't think of it off the top of my head so we're gonna have to deal with it but he said after running razor through it and getting all the rougher bits can take this guy kind of lightly go over it, try and get it as flat as possible. I'm not too worried, honestly. It's in pretty decent shape on top, so I think it'll go pretty smooth.
Alright, so this thing's sanded down, or blocked down, one of these guys. It's finger smooth. I don't think I'm gonna get too much better than that for what I have to work with here. I tried not to be too aggressive with it. I think from where it came from, it looks a thousand times better. I might touch it up a little bit more. I'm gonna start picking away at some of the auxiliary stuff here, like the water pump. It's crusty, it's old, It's it's gotta go. Time for a new one. All right, old, crusty. Actually, it doesn't look too, too bad internally, but up with the old, gotta be a freshie. <sighs> All right, going into this bad boy, Stewart water pump. I don't need to say much more. These things, uh, these things go without saying. They're kind of the best thing you can do as far as cooling goes. So, plopping her in. any of you guys have installed one of these in four, feel free to fact check me on this. But the pump has, like a, the part of the housing mates up, oops, sorry for the light. Part of the housing, I'll see if you can even see in there, mates up like perfectly with the top of that. Uh, made sense for me to install it that way, but if it's wrong, please let me know so I don't blow my motor up. All right, uh, head gasket time, baby. Since I'm here by myself, it's gonna be a little tricky. I'll probably get another zip tie and zip tie this chain like right here. That way you can kind of sneak the head past it later. One thing we got to do before we throw the copper spacer on is reapply a copper spray gasket. I don't have anything good to hang it on, so we're going to go outside. I have it set up on a box out there. I spray down one side really decent, let it dry, do the other side. Probably give it two coats just because I'm going to be handling it and it's going to be flipped on a box. So. All right, so that bad boy's on. Everything fits pretty well. Had a little uh, issue with this dowel. Didn't want to let it by, but took a little persuasion, but it's on. Everything looks pretty good. So on to the cut ring. Uh, I just want to make sure there's like a little bit of like slack right here. You probably hardly can tell, but um, I just want to make sure that at least in the centers here, none of them were overlapping or anything like that. All right, head's going on. I'm grabbing it.
Not gonna lie, not as bad as I thought it would be. These things are heavy, um, but yeah, as long as you have those two little dowels, it really helps. I don't think they're completely necessary, but there's no real reason to get rid of them. But yeah, that's, I think, it. Done. Dusted, throw it in the car, we're good. It is head stud time. ARP gives you this handy little guide. One thing that I've noticed, so if you see down at the bottom here, the final torque spec, it tells you is 75 uh, pound feet, foot pounds, whatever. From what I've seen, everyone does 85. 75, I guess they tend to loosen up or the heads lift. So we're gonna go to 85 for final, but otherwise it's, uh, it's pretty cut and dry. One thing to note on this, since we're using the copper spacer, I, like I said, I bought it secondhand from my buddy, but from what I understand, you are supposed to torque these down, like fully torqued over a span of three days. Supposedly it's to help let the copper spacer settle. I'm not really sure why, but I'm going to follow that because I would rather this thing stay together. So we'll throw the head studs in. I believe the instructions call for them to be torqued down to 25. Um, so we'll do that and then kind of just pick along at it anytime I have time to come up here. But for now, we'll at least get this thing secure. And then next time I'm at the shop, we'll bunker them down to the next step and then the final step after that. I'll do a little more digging from what I saw some of the people using the copper spacer torque down to 85 pound feet. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the 75 or the 85. I'll have to do some digging on that. ARP does call for 75, so we'll have to see. <laughs> One thing to uh, note when you're installing the washers on these, I don't know if it's common knowledge or if it's something people even do, but uh, the instructions do call to clean off all the oil on them. They come in like a little baggie. It's filled with um, the washers and like they're all layered in a, let me grab one. They have like this fine layer of oil on them. I don't know if you can really even see it, but like these things are clung together. I'm not holding them. So just make sure you wash that off. They also want you to have the head completely clean. So they tell you to use brake clean or similar, but this thing just got cleaned and washed, decked, all that, so there shouldn't really be anything on here, so I'm not too worried about that. But washers, make sure you wash them. So for the studs and the uh, nuts that go on, the instructions call for you to add just like a little dab of their lube on. What I've been doing is taking like a little blob on my finger, like yay big. Um, I did one on each of the studs. I'm doing same thing on each of the nuts and then just finger tightening them down for now. Easy peasy. All right, I think that's where we're gonna leave this one for today. If you made it this far, thank you. I really, really appreciate it. I know this is one that's gonna be kind of on the longer side, so thanks for sticking around. Next time we're back, I'll probably do at least the next torque spec by myself. I don't think I need, I don't think you guys need to see me get to 50 foot pounds. It's not that exciting. Next time we're here, we'll probably be doing thermostat. I have fresh exhaust bolts or um, exhaust studs rather. Probably be tackling those to at least get something else done. Hopefully the head will be ready to go so we can do final torque, start installing uh, cams, make sure timing is right and all that, and kind of go from there. But past that, this thing will be pretty close to being able to be dropped into a car, so I'm pretty psyched on that. So thank you again for checking it out. Hope to see you next time.